Um, hello again. This is now Tarot Lesson 149. And um, so this is some, I've, I've got various notes here. I've got quite a lot to cover. And I, I like to do things in one take. I don't want, I don't want to have to spend time cutting up video and reordering it and making transitions and all the rest of it. I like to just start and keep going and then get to the end. So various bits and pieces. Mainly this is about intu intuition and organic, but we'll get to that. So this is number 149, right? 145 and 9 is 14. We could look at this lesson as being about the temperance card because it's number 14. So this lesson is about you becoming stronger. Because if you temper metal, you burn off impurities and you make it stronger. So one way of looking at this lesson 149 is it's about you recognizing where you're weak or where you need to build up strength and doing something about building up the strength, right? And the thing is, the next will be 150. But 150 isn't 15, the devil, because the, the the way we're adding it up, we're we're adding up all the numbers and getting to the end. One in five is six, and zero is six. It's the lovers. So the next lesson we're going to say is about you're going to be at crossroads, and you're going to have to, or you don't have to do anything, but you'll be presented with the choice of doing what you've always been doing or doing something new and different. Um, so are you going to be Adam or are you going to be Eve? And maybe we'll consider what Adam and Eve represent. So this time, what have I got? I need to look at my notes. Okay, so if something goes wrong in your life, um, or we've got a problem, we tend to want to fix it, which kind of means going back to what it was before it went wrong. And it's kind of like you want to put it, put things back the way they were. And that's one way of dealing with things. And I think that's what most people do. So if you've got a problem in a relationship, you want to get back to what it was like before things deteriorated or before things went wrong. So... Um, I need to look at my notes again. Uh, whereas, okay, that's people and that's our life. Something goes wrong, we want to fix it, we want to get back to what it was like before. If there's a storm and trees in the forest get knocked over, the forest and nature don't try to get back to the way the forest looked before the storm. What happens is in nature, Everything works together. Be before the storm, there was a kind of harmony and everything was operating and working together to create this, the forest. After the storm and the destruction of the storm, let's say, everything works to reestablish a new harmony. And maybe that's the way to, for us to go when it comes to problems that we've got. Rather than try to get back to what it was like before it went wrong, what we do is we establish or work and bring everything together as much as we can to establish and create a new harmony because there was some kind of harmony before. Maybe it wasn't 100%, but it was there. And so maybe the more useful approach is re-establish or establish a new harmony. And this, this all began because I watched an interview with Miles Davis, the trumpeter, and somebody, somebody said that he was playing with Miles and he played a wrong chord in the song that they were, they were playing. And Miles didn't stop or he wasn't phased by it. And so the, the musician said to Miles afterwards, what happened? How did, how did you, why, why didn't you get thrown by the fact that I played the wrong chord. And Miles said, I, I'm, no, it's not a direct quote, I think, but he said, it's not that the note 
or the cord is wrong. It's what you do afterwards that makes it right or wrong. So it's not that the relationship is failing. It's more, what are you going to do next that will give you understanding of the relationship that then you aren't, you see that it is not that the relationship was wrong or bad. It's what you do next that's important that makes the situation you're going through good or bad. I feel like stopping at this point. Okay, so... However, the point of this is about, intu in, I'm calling it in, in, intuitive or organic. So there's a lot of videos out there about um, intuitive tarot reading. And using your, using your intuition seems to be the way to go because it's quick and easy. And you don't really need to know anything about anything. You just look and you talk based on your intuition. And so it, sometimes it's totally right. And that gives you confidence that you're intuitive. But it can just as easily be totally wrong. So um, there, are, there are problems with the intuitive approach, I think. One, it can be guesswork. So you look at a card and because you have a strong idea about what it's about, you assume that that's what it's about. And maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. Because maybe you're just guessing. That's point one about the intuitive approach. The other thing is, maybe you're talking about yourself, because if, you're, if you've been meaning to exercise or get fit or change your diet or do something for, in your own life, and you turn a card, maybe what you do is you start telling the questioner, this is what they ought to do, that yes, you ought to go to a gym and you ought to get fit and you ought to get strong. And that's good advice generally, but it may be irrelevant for the, that questioner at that time asking that question. So your, intu your intuition is giving you information, but the information may not be that important and it may not be an, act an actual answer to the question. So it can be irrelevant. So recently I watched a video um, from somebody, I can't remember her name, but it's, it's a two-card spread that she used. And she said it's the easiest two-card spread. So the first thing is the, the card that she used is the Ten of Swords. And she figured out the Ten of Swords had kept coming up in her daily card. And so she figured that this Ten of Swords was about a family member who was suffering from depression. So what you do is you, you, pick two, you have two cards. One is the problem, and then you pick a card at random, and that's the answer. So one, the, the, the problem, you go through the deck and you pick the card that describes the question and you take it out of the deck and then you shuffle and pick a card at random. So the problem, okay, so I, I found myself, it, it goes back to if, you, if you're using your intuition to pick a card to represent the question, that's okay from your point of view. So you're looking at this Ten of Swords as being somebody hand, trying to handle depression. But the problem might be something totally different. The questioner's problem or the, the root of the problem might be the sun, that they're being burned or they're being, they're spending, if it's a problem, then there's too much time in the sun. It's too bright. What they need is a period of darkness or a period to get out the limelight. Maybe they're in the public eye or maybe everybody's looking at them and they don't like being the object of everybody's attention. So the sun for them can be the problem, not the Ten of Swords. So if you, if you the reader, choose a card based on your intuition, it's telling you about you, I think, more so than it's telling you about the questioner. So anyway, so the 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 the, the reader, um, uh, so what she does is her her method is what you do is you look at this card, the the problem, and you look at the solution, and you see what's the difference between the two cards, and then so what she did was she looked at this this um, Ten of Swords, and she, I can't stand it, but she related the, the card to the sun in Gemini. And then she said, okay, Gemini is light and dark. It's, um, uh, what did she say? Um, black and white. So the 
the the person's got who's suffering from depression. The problem is she's the 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 family member is seeing everything in terms of black and white. But if you look at the three of swords, it's grey. So instead of looking at things as black and white, as yes or no, look at begin to look at the situation from the point of view of shades of grey. And everything is maybe not clear cut. And I found myself wondering if if you know anybody who's been who is suffering from depression, if you say to them something along the lines of you're going about it the wrong way, just buckle up, just begin to see what what be, begin to see things in terms of grey and not black and white. That's totally useless for the person suffering from depression. You know what it's like if you're if you're un, if you're stuck, somebody telling you to do, just get a move on, just buckle up and and make an effort, cheer up, it'll never happen. That kind of stuff is totally unhelpful. So I found that the the looking at the Three of Swords and saying to the depressed person, um, rather than look at things as being cut and dried or black and white, look at them, look, be, begin to see what are, the, what are the possibilities, which is good advice, only... I question whether somebody in a state of depression is not going to is going to take what you take something out of what you tell them or whether they're going to throw something at you because you're not helpful. And it occurred to me that if you're intuitive, maybe your intuition tells you what is, but it's not maybe that useful to figure out what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? It's telling you what is going on and you may be right. But um, can you take that same rightness and apply it to a solution and be as correct with the solution? And I don't think it works that way. So the other thing is, the, the, the reader talked about the sun in the Ten of Swords, apparently is the sun in Germany. She's using Golden Dawn astrological correlations. And the problem is the Golden Dawn astrology is rubbish. But anyway, I'll, that's for another video. So she talked about the Ten of Swords as being the Queen, the, the Sun in Gemini and how it's black and white. Gem, how do you get black and white from Gemini? Gemini is mortal and immortal. It's not black and white. There's a difference between black and white and mortal and immortal because Gemini is the heavenly twin or the twins. One's mortal, one's immortal. So you can't just make it up to suit yourself. I can look at this Ten of Swords as being undecided or unclear because you don't know if the clouds are coming down and blotting out the, the brightness or whether they're lifting and it's a new, better time ahead. So you, with the Ten of Swords, you're unsure. With, the, with the, the Three of Swords, it's clear you're in pain. So the difference between these two cards is uncertainty as opposed to something that's not that pleasant but at least you know what you're dealing with so uh, okay so that was page one and then the second bit is by contrast if we act if, we, if we're organic and that's I think what I want people to do assuming that I want anybody to do anything so if we go back to what Kat said a couple of videos ago, or maybe it was the last video, she looked at the eight of, the eight of batons and saw it as these, so the batons coming down from above, so it can represent guidance. So if you, if you write down guidance as a meaning for the card or a possible, or something that's going on, G-U-I-D-A-N, something that's going on in the card, Right? And I'm thinking organically here. So we've now got the idea of guidance connected with this card. And we don't need to remember it because we thought of it and it's in our memory banks or it's in our subconscious mind. We, we look at this card and some intelligent part of us is flicking through. And it means that if it's guidance and the Queen of Pentacles comes up, you're automatically thinking guidance, the Queen of Pentacles, and you're putting the, the idea with the Queen and saying to the person, there's an older woman in your life 
you should listen to her. And you, you're not, you're not um, being intuitive. You're taking the idea of guidance from this card and putting it together with a court card. And because the queen is upright, we're saying this older woman or older person knows what they're about. It's pentacles. So you can take, listen, you should listen to what they say and they'll give you good information about what to do or how to proceed. Whereas if the queen of cups, a uh, queen of coins is upside down, watch out that this somebody like that is going to be giving you bad advice. So listen to what they have to say and then figure out whether it's sensible or not. And at the same time, maybe you got the Knight of Swords. So guidance and the Knight of Swords in some way goes, I don't think I meant that. Um, so guidance in the Knight of Swords. Um, uh, when you are, so you, you've got this card and you're looking at it and you also notice the Knight of Swords. So you say, you're thinking of guidance and you say, because why does anybody, why do you ever say anything to anybody? You've got a reason for it. And so you, in a reading, are giving yourself reasons to say what you're saying. And it's based on, for instance, the idea of guidance here with the Knight of Swords. When you know what to do, do it. Because the Knight of Swords is taking action and he's moving ahead, moving forward. When you know what to do, do it rather than wonder if it's a good thing to do what you do is you do it and see how it works and if it's working well good you've done it if it's not quite right change it a little bit whereas if the knight of swords is upside down and you're thinking guidance don't rush into things take it easy and there's a an english motto what is it um uh it's the opposite of he who hesitates is lost can't remember it anyway Whereas if we've got, for instance, the Four of Cups and you're thinking of guidance. So you look at the Four of Cups and you say, if so, that you, your solution, your answer doesn't lie in what you already know, because the person's looking at these three cups, the answer will come to you, but it's not going to be directly in front of you. It's going to be off to the side. So pay attention to odd ideas that you get or that other people tell you. And that's where you're going to find your solution. Because we're thinking of guidance. What makes good guidance? Cat also meant, I think that's what I had to say about that. Cat um, also mentioned that we've got the house in the background and the battens appear in front of it so they can represent obstacles. So if we've got guidance for the Eight of Cups, the Eight of Batons, we've also got obstacles. S-T-A-C-L-E-S. -E Can you read that? It says obstacles, but you know how to say it, how to spell it. Okay, so if we've got if we're looking at this card and we're thinking guidance and we're putting it together, we can also look at we we may we may remember or think I need to, to I, I find myself talking about obstacles for some reason. The reason you're talking about obstacles is because um, it's something, a word you wrote down in connection with this card. What have I got here? Obstacles. So if there are obstacles, how do you move on? Because there are obstacles and you want to move forward. So if the death card happens to come up in the reading, you know what to do with the death card because you've got the idea of obstacles here. So what do you do? Go for a new start. Death is endings and beginnings. Figure out what is no longer valuable or useful, what you don't enjoy, and do something new. And that's what the death card means. It's an obstacle. If you, you, there's no point in trying to, trying to solve it, maybe. Or an obstacle is an obstacle. So do something about it. And with the death card, go for a fresh start. Whereas you may also find the Ace of Pentacles. So here we've got, again, you, you've got, because we're looking at the Eight of Batons as obstacles, we, we need, we're going to look at cards that represent new beginnings. And I've got a third one here, uh, the Three of Cups. So these, you, you're looking at these three cards, or if one or other comes up in the spread, you know what to do with the Death card. That's an obs that shows obstacles make a whole new fresh start. So look at your whole life because it's a major trump. Look at everything in your life and see what you can do to make it make it new or make it 
a fresh start. Whereas if we're thinking obstacles and the Ace of Pentacles, figure out what you care about because it's values and pentacles and make a fresh start, begin again. And maybe what you do is you look at this garden here and we've got a kind of um, entryway in the hedge or in the, f in the fence. So maybe you say to the person with the eight of batons, it's time to move on, move out of your garden, move out of where you've been cultivating or where you've got used to being and go somewhere new. Do it. So maybe it's a cost conscious money. Maybe it's time to go for a promotion or get a new job or get a job in a different area or get new qualifications, whatever it happens to be that's new and different because we've got obstacles here and we've got newness here. And maybe what you do if you're stuck or if you've got obstacles here, find other people and celebrate. Do something you enjoy. Find things that you love or people that you love and get can get along with and spend time with them because it may be that you're watching the news and it depresses you. And here, you're better to find people, like-minded people who are interested in living and celebrating and doing enjoyable things. So either find people to do it with or find things that you enjoy doing and put time and energy and money maybe into doing the things that you enjoy. And that's how to find a purpose in your life. Do what, do what you love. Do what you find. Figure out what you enjoy doing and do it. And the last card I've got here is a six of bat. And so if you've got an obstacle here and you're, this card comes up in the spread, you say to the person that teamwork is good. So r rather than try to do everything on your own, find out the people who can support you in whatever it is that you want to do. So the difference I think I want to say is you can be intuitive um, and maybe that will work for you. But you can also be organic and somehow writing down basic ideas of what you see in any particular card. And then it, it means that if you look at a card and then you've got other cards in the spread, you're going to be able to blend and combine and introduce correct and relevant ideas based on the other cards that come up. If you've got one or two, not, not just one word for the card, but multiple possibilities for what is going on or what action or what activity is going on in the card. So with the Eight of Bartons, we have um, uh, guidance and obstacles. Also, Kat mentioned that the Bartons, the, the leaves seem to be coming out in the Barton. So it can represent new growth. And so with you can see here, so maybe what you do is you write down new growth. So you've got three, at least three, and probably a lot more um, uh, ideas connected with any particular card. And you trust your inner self or your inner intelligence or your, but it's you and it's your thoughts and your inner thinking is going to put together and blend for you influences of different cards to give you something relevant and useful to say to answer the question that's been asked. And it's organic, I think, if you can get that idea rather than being intuitive. Maybe it, maybe it is intuitive, but it doesn't start with just intuition and it doesn't start from nowhere and from nothing. It starts from your ideas and your thinking and your notations about activity and ideas that go with a particular with every particular card and you've got it written down in your notebook you don't need to remember it and hold it all in the forefront of your mind you th you thought it it's in your mind and it'll come back when you need it to come back or when it's appropriate for it to come back so you can trust yourself Okay, that was it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, never say this, but if you haven't subscribed, 
please subscribe. I said please. If you haven't, maybe give it a thumbs up. I've been watching videos and everybody begins videos with, you know, subscribe and smash that like button and and push the thumbs up. And so maybe I'll be like everybody else and ask you to subscribe if you haven't already and and push the thumbs up button and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.